I'm Sabrina Abu Abade, and I'm gonna draw my life. I was born in Melbourne, Florida on June 13th, 1990. My family consisted of my dad, my mom, and my sister Beth. When I was three years old, my mom, dad, and I moved to Jordan. Beth stayed in Florida with her dad. When we first got to Jordan, we moved in with my dad's parents. They had a huge three-level house, including the basement. They needed it because they have like eight or nine kids. I remember there was a fountain outside in the middle of the house. Like you could literally walk outside in the middle of the house. And I always wanted to go out there, but my grandma would never let me out there because she said it was too dangerous. Eventually, we moved to our own house. Some of my fondest memories are getting fresh bread with my dad. And learning my ABCs and 123s with my mom. Not all of my memories were that great. There was a boy that lived across the street who always teased me. One time he even pantsed me. Right in the middle of the street. My grandma from Florida would always send me candy. And episodes of Barney since everything on TV was in Arabic. I used to have these night terrors every single night at the same time. My uncle would be like, Oh, it's 11 o'clock, time for Sabrina. And I would just stand in my bed and scream and cry for hours for no reason, because I was having night terrors. Eventually they went away. When I was five years old, I got really, really sick from eating unpasteurized yogurt. I think they said it was called brucella. My mom said I was tomato red and I had 105 fever. The doctor said if they hadn't called him any sooner, I would have died. Soon after my mom got pregnant, she had my sister Sarah. She was the only one out of my siblings who was born in Jordan. Over the time that I spent living in Jordan, apparently I learned to speak fluent Arabic. When I was six, we moved back to Florida. My dad stayed in Jordan, but he would come back soon. Props to my mom for traveling all alone with Sarah and I. My mom's parents would help babysit me all the time. And one time there was something on TV where they were speaking Arabic, and I was like, why are you watching this? And they're like, because I want to. Do you know what they're saying? And I was like, no. And they're like, can you speak Arabic? And I was like, no, never. And I like never spoke Arabic ever again. I have no idea why. Apparently I skipped kindergarten, or in this case, kindergarten. This was because I was six years old and six year olds went to first grade. So I took a test and passed it. My dad came back, and we lived with my great-grandma. That's where I made friends with a boy named Timmy. We played outside all the time and had a secret club under his stairs. When I was eight, my sister Amber was born. Timmy's mom helped us make a sign that said, Welcome home, Amber. And I remember being shocked at how small she was. Soon I became best friends with a girl named Amber. Not to be confused with my sister Amber. We went swimming all the time and we were friends at school. We were even in a school play together called the Showdown, Hoedown, Showdown, I have no idea, I can't remember. It was like a hillbilly play. I always did pretty well in school. I even won first place on the science fair. We moved when I started middle school and Amber and I parted. I lived in this new house with my three sisters and my cousin Nikki, who I just called my sister since we lived together and we were so close. Yeah, it was a crowded house. One of the best memories I have at this house is this one time when I was talking with Nikki on my bed, we heard a tap on the window. She's like, what's that? I was like, I don't know, and I opened up the blinds and I saw this 
brown. It looked like antlers and I screamed, it's a deer! But it was my dad tapping on the window with a knife and pantyhose on his head. I became best friends with a girl named April and we would act really goofy and hang out in her scary tree fort that had no sides and was like really up high. I got good grades in middle school. My dad really pushed me to do well. I remember one time I got a C on my interim and I cried to my history teacher about it and he changed it to a B. One time April and I stayed up for three days in a row and my mom thought we were on drugs and I even hallucinated. That's a really random memory. Just before high school we moved again and I said bye to April. In high school I met a girl named Jessica. We had the law academy together. I thought I was going to be a CSI person. One time I spent the night at her house and she taught me how to sneak out. I would later get caught sneaking out of my house, not once, but twice. It was the worst trouble I've ever been in. I made friends with a boy named Jason. He was friends with the boy who lived next to my aunt's house and we always went to my aunt's house. I saw him doing BMX one day and I was like, wow, I want to do that. So I saved up my own money, got my own bike, and went to the skate park on Thursdays, which was bike night, and I even dropped an 8 foot half pipe one time. But then that was all ruined when I snuck out. I was devastated and so depressed. I cried all the time. I started wearing lots of black makeup and black clothes and listening to screamo music. Not that there's anything wrong with screamo music. Around 10th to 11th grade, I met Casey. She had the same bus stop as me. And one of the first memories I have of her is when Jason tail tapped her brand new basketball hoop and she opened the door and death stared us both. Eventually we started hanging out and playing video games like Guitar Hero and DDR. We became BFF, like best friends forever and I know I sprawled friend wrong. Please don't give me crap. I made friends with this boy named John who rode my bus. He would always make me listen to his band's music on repeat. He'd be like, do you like it? And he'd be like, I love it. He was in a band called Hope Remains and his bandmates went to another school. Right around this time, my brother Jacob was born. He was my first brother. But anyways, back to Hope Remains. I supported them through MySpace with comments and spelt friends wrong again. Andrew would eventually reply and be like, Wanna come over to the DJ's house? And this is where I met the love of my life, DJ Monopoly. And he insists that this drawing looks like PewDiePie. I went to his house and introduced myself to the band members, we hung out, and I even played some guitar for him. He said that's when he fell in love with me. I was 16 and finally able to drive. Casey and I would go to DJs all the time and have so much fun with video games and photography. But then a little bit after that, my parents started having a lot of problems. I always wanted to stay in my room or leave. Some of the people who made an impact on my life at this time were musicians. I would go down the road to my friend Justin's and watch him play bass in his garage. This inspired me to save up and get my own bass. And a little while later, I would meet Jeff. He helped me with guitar. I would watch his band play in a garage, and it was a nice getaway. Ever since I was a little girl, I was always in the music. I would throw Britney Spears concerts in the garage for my mom. I worked at Hollister now, and then would go back to Albertsons. The reason I got jobs as a teenager was because I wanted to buy things for myself that my parents wouldn't buy such as expensive clothes. First I worked at Albertsons when I was 15, then I went to Hollister, and then I went back to Albertsons. My parents rode a rough roller coaster. And eventually things would work out. In the meantime, I acquired a new half-brother, Aiden, who is now my biggest fan. In July 2008, I started dating DJ. The... Uh, actually, it's not over yet. There's so much more to my life, but I just can't fit it all into this video. That's just my life in a nutshell. 
and it's not over. Click on the right to see the rest, and on the left to see DJs Draw My Life. Don't forget to subscribe!